The Secret of Kells is an enchanting animated film that takes viewers on a mesmerizing journey into a world of Celtic mythology, bravery, and the power of imagination. Directed by Tom Moore, the film showcases breathtaking visuals, a captivating storyline, and a deep appreciation for art. And dare I say it, this might take the cake for the most beautifully animated movie I've ever seen. And now it could be because I just recently watched it kind of riding off the high of the movie, but I don't know. This movie's up there when it comes to art. And one of the reasons why is this movie takes inspiration from one of the most underappreciated animated movies of all time, The Thief and the Cobbler, which I highly recommend you watch my video on that movie because that movie's incredible as well. This is also inspired by the Book of Kells. The Book of Kells is an illuminated manuscript that is considered one of Ireland's greatest treasures and is one of the finest examples of medieval manuscript artistry. It is a beautifully decorated gospel book containing the four gospels of the New Testament written in Latin. Now, I already mentioned this movie has a lot of mythology, a lot of folklore. I'm going to be delving into that because honestly, after researching some of this, it's really interesting. And I don't think I'm the only one here who thinks that, you know, Greek and Norse mythology, like we get it, you know, we've heard it, we've seen the Marvel movies. So it's a really nice change of pace because we don't really hear much about Celtic mythology. Now, while I did love this movie, I do want to mention there is one thing that I don't really like about this movie. And I feel like it really has to be the dialogue. There are moments in this movie that kind of feel robotic to an extent where it just pushes you in that direction. There's not like transitions into moments that kind of just that moment just happens. And I mean, that could obviously be the fact that this movie is a very short movie. But I feel like if this movie had a little bit more time, it honestly could have been even better. And I just want to mention, I'm not really a religious person. That's just not my thing. You know, if you want to do it, you do whatever you want. And the reason I'm saying this is I was a little bit worried this movie would be too focused on Christianity and God, or it would kind of make me not care for it that much but to my great surprise the messages in this movie go so far beyond a religious standpoint because at its core this movie isn't really about religion it's more about creativity versus practicality and embracing imagination and nature are you guys tired of encountering those this content is not available in your region messages? Or are you worried about your personal data falling into the wrong hands? Now, I understand very well the importance of internet security. And that's why I've partnered with Atlas VPN to bring you an unparalleled solution. Now, Atlas VPN does not only mask your IP address, but it also encrypts your internet connection, creating an impenetrable shield against prying eyes. With servers strategically located around the globe. You can easily bypass geo restrictions and access your favorite content that you normally wouldn't be able to get. And I know you guys with VPNs might be thinking, oh yeah, you know, some techie stuff it might be a little bit complicated to understand, but no, it's as simple as the click of a button. One click and all of that stress is gone. You don't have to worry about your internet security. You don't have to worry about someone trying to find your stuff. And also with Atlas VPN, this blocks malware and ads. Now that's something you don't normally see in VPNs and that's something I really like. I mean, not for YouTube, though. Watch the ads. Watch the ads on, on my YouTube video. I'm coming from someone who is constantly online, as this is my job. And also, I have had security scares in the past. Atlas VPN is something that's really nice just because I don't have to have that extra stress on top of me all the time. And above everything else, with Atlas VPN, it is the best deal on the market. And you guys can grab this big deal right now. Atlas VPN Premium is only $183 per month, plus three extra months. And with a 30 day money back guarantee. That is basically pocket chain. You guys get to protect your privacy and get all these amazing benefits of Atlas VPN at a ridiculously low price. And if you want this deal, go into that description and click that link and do it quick because this is a limited time deal and you want to get it while it lasts. Set in medieval Ireland during the 9th century, The Secret of Kells follows the story of a young boy named Brendan. Brendan resides in the remote and fortified Abbey of Kells, which is under the constant threat from Viking raids, which in this movie they are referred to as the Northmen. As Brendan's uncle, Abbot Kallach strives to protect the Abbey, but Brendan's curious nature and thirst for knowledge draws him towards Brother Aiden, a master illuminator, which eventually leads him to go against the Abbot's words and head into the Forbidden Forest. And if you're wondering what Abbey, Abbot, and Illuminator means, the Abbot is kind of what you would consider the head monk. And an abbey is just a community of monks or nuns. And what an illuminator is, that's just what we would consider to be an artist or a scribe. But the town of Kells is a small town surrounded by a gigantic wall. And I know what you're thinking. Jesus! 
Stop. We're going to build a wall. Stop it. The abbot spends most of everyone's time in the village building the a wall. wall. But the town does have illuminators. It is interesting to think about it, especially nowadays where it's not something that we have to worry about. Thinking about how important illuminators are, you know, artists, scribe, people who document life in books, because all they had back then is books, where now we have the internet. Books have the ability to transcend boundaries, uplift spirits, preserve cultural heritage, which is what the illuminators do. And that is extremely important because, I mean, we've heard of plenty of stories back then where entire civilizations can just disappear without documentation, which is why illuminators are so important. And as Brennan is talking to the illuminators, okay. Uh, I, I, I know they didn't do it on purpose. Uh, it, uh, don't worry, I looked it up. They didn't do this on purpose, but yeah, a little weird. Little weird, that's all I'll say about this one. The Illuminators tell the tale of the Book of Iona and the Master Illuminator, Brother Aiden, the man who possessed the Eye of Columkill. The Eye of Columkill refers to the legendary artifact associated with St. Columbia, an Irish monk and missionary who lived in the 6th and 7th centuries. According to folklore and medieval Irish texts, the Eye of Columkill was a sacred relic that possessed mystical properties. And according to the stories, the Eye of Columkill had supernatural abilities. It was believed to possess the power of clairvoyance, allowing its owner to see events afar or even glimpse into the future, which is actually something that we see a couple times with Brendan. So Brendan has a vision and finds out that the island of Iona, the place that the Illuminators talk so highly about, was actually already ravaged by the Northmen. A survivor appears at the doors of Kells and it happens to be the master Illuminator the monks were talking about. Brother Aiden along with this cat, Pangerbon, which Pangerbon is actually a reference to an old Irish poem of the same name. And just to summarize the main message behind the poem, it's about the shared pursuit of knowledge and the parallel journeys of the scholar who wrote the poem and his cat. And it also has a really good message about human relationships with animals and how that's very important. So Brother Aiden arrives at the Abbey and the first thing Brendan asks is about the book, of course, which he was then met with Abbot taking Aiden away in order to tell him about the plans to fortify Kells. See, Abbot actually used to be an illuminator himself, but he ended up giving up on that. And then he literally closed himself off from the world. Just as someone would put up walls on their mind to shut themselves off from anything that is outside their mental bubble, Abbott has done the same thing in the literal sense for his village. And I feel like that is something we as humans deal with when we grow up. I feel like Abbott is kind of a product of someone who let go of that childlike wonder, that imagination, his magic, if you will. This really does happen to all of us as time goes on and as we get older. Some of us just end up putting up walls on our creativity and our imagination, just kind of blocking ourselves in. We end up becoming too scared to take that step into the forbidden forest, becoming too comfortable. Aiden ends up telling Abbott that the wall will not stop the Northmen. No matter what they do, all they can do is run. But Abbott just doesn't budge, which I feel like it would be smart to take advice from the dude who just had his entire town destroyed. But Brennan was soon able to gaze upon the Book of Iona, and he finds the beautiful drawings of the Illuminator. Then Aiden shows him the final page, which happens to be empty. So he asks Brendan to go out into the Forbidden Forest to find him some specific berries in order to make ink so he can finish the book. So against Abbott's wishes, he heads to the forest and the forest is just animated so beautifully. There's so much detail and unique designs. I feel like this is done to show that connection between imagination, inspiration, and the natural world. The film really does emphasize the importance of preserving our connection to the environment and embracing our imagination. His first encounter in the forest is wolves. Yeah, he almost, he almost dies. And as he is about to get shredded to pieces, a white wolf appears and calls them off. And this white wolf happens to be a fairy named Ashling. Ashling in Celtic mythology refers to the poetic version of a beautiful woman symbolizing Ireland, evoking sentiments of longing, hope, and resilience in the face of adversary. The word Ashling itself actually means dream or vision in Irish. And we could definitely see that that was the inspiration for this as what is to come. So Ashling is a fairy who owns this forest. She ends up showing Brennan where to find the berries as long as he promises never to come back to the forest again. And the more and more we look at the animation and the art of the forest, we start to notice how it looks very, very similar to the art of the original Book of Kells. The swirls of the branches and the color is almost like you're looking into a kaleidoscope. Brendan finds himself bewitched by the beauty of the forest, all until he finds himself upon the entrance of something way more sinister. 
the entrance to the cave of Krom Kruuk. He does not fear Krom because he doesn't believe that Krom is real. And as we fade out to a top-down shot of the entrance to the cave of Krom Kruuk, we could see it looks exactly like an eye. And then he starts realizing that he was very wrong about this as black tendrils reach out from the cave to grab him and Ashling. But Ashling at the last second was able to save him by closing the entrance to the cave. Now let's talk about Chrome Kruak for a second because he's pretty cool. He's actually considered to be one of the oldest deities in Irish culture. He is described as a beast of great length with jagged teeth and a tail that wrapped around the face of the firmament. His scales glowing like the fire under the sun, his one one open eye filled with bloodlust and hate. His entire thing is he wants to watch the world burn. He doesn't really care about anything else but blood and hatred. A very terrifying monster for a young hero. And if you guys want to know more about Chrome Kruak, because it is really interesting, I would recommend checking out a channel called Black Dragon Taverns, because I actually watched his video on this subject before talking about it. He goes into great detail about this. So Brennan heads back to the Abbey, and Ashling actually tells him that he can come back to the forest to visit her again. Brennan ends up telling his uncle that he went into the woods, and obviously his response was was pretty angry and he told him never to leave the walls again and i just want to mention i do kind of pity abbott a little bit as he really does come off like a hard-headed asshole but really all he wants is to protect his nephew and protect his people it's just the fact that he's so hard-headed he's almost digging himself a grave because thinking practically isn't always the answer Brennan gives the berries to Aiden and he shows him how to create ink and how to draw as well and i love the way he goes about showing him how to create and draw as Brendan accidentally splatters ink onto his canvas, instead of telling him, you know, scrap that and start over, he says, finish what you start. And I love this because I feel like anyone who creates should learn this and live by this motto. Keep moving forward. I know a lot of us get something called writer's block, and I feel like that happens a lot when it comes to me writing music, for example. But I feel like this is a restraint we put on ourselves. And don't get me wrong, it's not like an easy thing to break out of these restraints. But in the end, the only person stopping us from moving on is ourselves. Now, before I did mention the analogy of the walls when it comes to Abbott, and I feel like that's when you get stuck. You put up mental walls. Mine stem from my anxiety. For example, is this song good enough? Will people even listen to this? Am I even cut out to do this? This sounds like shit. I'm just going to scrap this and start over. Am I even cut out to do this crap? But that's exactly what keeps you still. It's almost like you're walking, but you're headed nowhere. But anyway, while all of this is happening, the Northmen are getting closer and closer, killing everyone in its path. So Aiden finally admits to Brendan that he's actually become too old and too shaky to finish the Book of Iona. And he's been searching for the right person to finish it. And he believes that person is to be Brendan. Ashling ends up gifting him more berries and we can see that his drawings are directly inspired from that time in the forest. As when he's writing stuff down, you could actually see him imagining him in the forest on the pages. He even ends up showing these drawings to Ashling. And as he's progressing faster and faster, Aiden finally tells him that there is one more piece to the puzzle before he can actually finish the final page. He needs the Eye of Column Kill. However, Aiden actually lost the eye when he was in his village running away. Aiden actually explains to him the origins of the Eye of Column Kill by telling him that's not the original name of the crystal. The original name of the crystal is actually the Eye of Krom Kruuk. While Aiden is saying this, he is none the wiser about the fact that Brendan actually knows the entrance to the cave of Krom Kruuk. Brendan tries to sneak out one more time into the forest only to be stopped by the abbot, who then locks him in his room until he comes to his senses. Abbot then forbids Aiden from speaking with Brendan ever again. However, Pangerbon notices the situation and heads into the forest to ask for Ashling's help. And with the power of Ashling, he was able to escape. He sings a beautiful song of Pangerbon inspired by the old English poem, and the song is very haunting and reminiscent of old Irish folk music. Panger then transforms into a spirit and was able to unlock the door and free Brendan. He heads to the forest and he explains how he needs the eye of Krom Kruak in order to finish the book. This is where Ashling admits to him the reason she doesn't have a family is the fact that Krom Kruak actually killed all of her family, including her mother. She's actually the last of her kind in that forest forest. But reluctantly, she agrees to help him in hopes that he would be able to defeat Chrome Kruak for good. And apparently Chrome has some way of weakening fairies as Ashling instantly starts looking weaker, almost like a wilting flower. She was able to hold open the entrance of the cave long enough for Brendan to get through. And as he turns to find her swallowed by darkness, her final words to him were... <laughs> 
And this next scene is so visually gratifying, he falls into some sort of abyss and Chrome Kruak, the giant serpent, appears before him. Chrome's design is so unique, but I love it. I know a lot of people are going to make references to Snake the game, or yeah, I can definitely see that. But during the beginning of this fight, it seems like all Brennan can do is dodge his attacks, because really, he got no way of fighting this guy. He got really lucky when all of a sudden the chalk that he used to show Ashling his drawings fell from his pocket. He ends up being able to use this chalk to create something of a circle prison to hold Chrome Kruik. And I was kind of confused about this at first, but I feel like the reason he's able to do this actually has a lot to do with Ashling's words. Turn the darkness into light. Brendan is an illuminator. An illuminator is someone who creates stuff, who draws, who makes books and other things. And the way he illuminates is by drawing. The art is the light. And he uses that to trap Chrome and steal the eye. And in a blind rage, Chrome actually consumes himself as Brennan was able to escape with the eye. He also finds that Ashling did survive as well when he sees a line of flowers headed to the forest. He heads back and uses the eye of Chrome to create the most beautiful art. And we find out the reason the eye is so important is it's basically like a magnifying glass with different shapes, almost like I mentioned before, kind of like a kaleidoscope effect, which makes a lot of sense when you see the real life Book of Kells. I can imagine back then they would see like a perfectly cut crystal as magic in a way. But in order to keep his uncle none the wiser of the situation, the other illuminators actually discover that Brendan is creating the last page. They all end up hiding this information from Abbott and actually help Brendan finish the page by kind of covering for him. But unfortunately, while all the Illuminators are focusing on Brennan creating the last page, Abbott discovered a survivor, and he learns that the Northmen are upon them. And even though Aiden again tells him the doors won't hold, Abbott just won't listen to him, and soon comes a lot quicker than Abbott expected. And the first of many arrows that the Northmen shoot lands directly on Brennan's uncle as the Northmen break down the doors like it's nothing. This scene is very dark, sad and depressing because of the fact that this is something that did happen like this is stuff that happened back then this is where the movie really takes a dark turn as everyone in the village tries to make it inside the tower but with the weight of all the people trying to rush in the flimsy stairs crash and everyone who falls ends up dying but abbott actually ended up locking both aiden and brendan in the illuminator study only for it to catch on fire so abbott tries to make it to the building in time to get them out and let them escape but before he reaches the door, he was stabbed in the back by a Northman. The Northmen break into the building and Aiden, Brennan, and Pangerbon were able to escape by using the ink and creating a cloud of smoke. They both escape. Brendan sees his uncle's lifeless body before he runs into the forest. In the forest, they run into the Northmen who end up destroying the Book of Iona, but Brendan, Panger, and Aiden were all saved by Ashling, who made the wolves rip the Northmen apart. And yeah, they, they like, they ate him. They ate him up. They try to grab all of the pages they could and run. And Brendan sees Ashling as she runs off into the forest before Brendan could even say anything to her. And this next part is kind of an overtime thing. We see Aiden and Brendan become older as they go on their journey to finish the book. And they end up sharing the book with plenty of other people, giving them hope in the time of the Northmen. Years pass by and the book has been completed. And he finally sees Ashling in the forest again. She ends up leading him back to his old village. Miraculously, not only Abbott, but everyone who made it in the tower survived. And he was finally able to face Abbott after all of these years. Abbott ends up apologizing for his foolishness and hard-headedness. And Brennan gifted the book to his uncle, which they deemed the Book of Kells. And that's how our story ends. The Secret of Kells is a masterful blend of history, mythology, and creativity. It really reminds us the importance of preserving cultural heritage, whereas back then, this was so important to write this stuff down, whereas today, you know, we got the internet. Every information in the world is right in front of our face. But this movie was such a good watch for me as I myself have been having issues with my creative side. My practical side, or I would say my fiscal side, really starts putting up those walls, really boxing me in and limiting my creativity and my imagination, making it hard for me to think freely. Not only when it comes to music, but even when it comes to videos as well. Like when you box yourself into a limited space, it's truly hard to find something unique. But when it comes to art, there are no mistakes. It's only what you make. People won't remember you for what you say, for what you do. They will remember you for how you made them feel, the hope that you gave them, the inspiration you gave them, the happiness you gave them. So I guess the last thing I could say here is go out and create something. You know, break down those walls. Have a good day.